What's going on guys? Chad back here with you on the RC Models and More channel. And today we're going to be talking about the Race Flight Revolt 2 and Race Flight 1 installation. Now there's already plenty of videos out there about the configurator, how to configure your quad, all that stuff. I think Joshua Bardwell did one. I've seen a couple of them from the big guys. But this is more pointed toward... Uh, maybe inexperienced or somewhat experienced builders um, just to tell you about my experience first of all the race flight one configurator and everything that they talk about at race flight to me so far is a hundred percent true as long as you build the quad right wire it up right and use the right components the wizard steps and everything works perfectly it calibrates everything Update your ESCs. Real easy just to click and change your motor direction. And I mean, you're literally hovering in five minutes. Um, there's no going in and setting this and turning this on and turning that off. All that kind of stuff like that. Now, the weather's been crap, and all I've done is hover test. But, like I said, less than five minutes and you're hovering. So... The one key after listening to some of the podcasts where Preston and them were on was them talking about components and things changed so fast since those podcasts have came out, you know, they've released like their own PDB, their own four in one ESCs and things like that. But what I have for my build is of course, uh, the revolt two, which is a little bit different than the one there's a pinout diagram and stuff like that that you can print off. As long as you solder everything up exactly like it says, you have no problems at all. Uh, for power distribution, I'm using the basic Maytech board with the 5 and 12 volt. This is the mini power hub. This has worked great with my build. Of course, I'm using FreeSky XSR, which actually will do two-way communication. So it, the flight controller will send telemetry back to the Tyrannus. And then ESC wise, I am using the Cicada 30 amp uh, BL Hell ES ESCs, which I saw some people, other people were using them and they said that they had no compatibility issues with race flight one and neither did I. So basically the wizard will run through and do everything and you'll have absolutely zero problems um if you're a subscriber to my channel you know that i hate building i can build obviously um i have a built quad here that actually flies um i'm big into the ready to fly stuff and the wizards and everything like that just because i just want to fly i get so tired of like fixing stuff and doing this and doing that but unfortunately the ready to flies have just kind of fallen behind and all the tech that's out there esc wise flight controller wise i mean this thing here just the setup and everything alone is just really where it's at um if you take a look real close here you can see that my board is just friction fit with the gummies it's super solid it won't come off unless you really pull on it it's a super short stack really short um, most important thing that they talk about and I still see a lot of people doing this people that I respect I even saw Joshua Bardwell do it you know Preston and and them say do not put nothing on top of the board to touch the gyro there in the middle so I make sure that there's nothing pressing on the gyro so that way everything should fly great and of course i'll update everything with the video down the road about how well it flies and everything and rates and this and that you know because there's still a lot of questions but i'm just talking about from a build perspective you know what they preach is if you can build decently then you're going to be able to get in the air quick and fly great and so far i pretty much have to agree with that What's going on guys? Chad back here with the uh, NERC Models and War channel. And I just made a video showing my uh, Race Flight 1 build uh, that I'm doing with the Zeus HD by Flynoceros. I said I wasn't going to do 
the actual configurator tutorial, but I'm going to go ahead and run through it anyway, just because there's a couple things that I want to show and a couple things that I want to look at. So right now we are in the race flight one application and we are going to plug in the board props are off all that good stuff all right so now we are plugged in and we have race flight one up and running i've already updated the firmware if you look up here it says 0.195 which is the newest one the wizard step one set up your flight controller step two detect receiver step three set up radio update esc calibrate motors fix motor direction and idle speed so i was playing around with my motors and i want to actually calibrate them again so it says I have removed props and disconnected the battery. Click next. Now it's saying to plug in the battery and wait until you hear the tones. So I'm going to plug in the battery. So that's the first set. So now we'll click OK. All right, and that's it. So that is what I wanted to do. I'm going to click on Save. The last button is where you basically can set your idle speed and your arming switch. So let's take a look into configuration and this is what I wanted to do. Up here it basically is telling us that we're running an S-Bus and if we look down here there's terrain telemetry and I hooked up the fourth wire from the XSR which basically will transmit back information and I want to set that up on my Tyrannus so that way I can get the VBAT monitoring. Also wanted to go into PID tuning and show everybody a little bit. Obviously these are the beta flight stock uh, sorry race flight stock pids. Um, they have different levels default and 6s that you can select. I'm still using default and then I am running different the race flight low expo rate profiles they have high expo kiss rates and beta flight rates which will kind of throw in these algorithms to try and sort everything back out to something maybe you're more familiar with but I'm gonna put the defaults back in because which is 400 because on my second build what I ended up changing was the acro plus so that way my rotations are slower at the end of the stick and I still haven't got to fly this thing yet because the weather is just crap outside So let me go through here, go this one down again. All right. And then when we scroll down, down here is filtering. Now I am going ahead and just select low filtering because from what Preston and them have said, low filtering or ultra low filtering is pretty much what everybody's using. So now everything is set up, and let's go take a look at the Tyrannus. Alright, so here we are in the Tyrannus, and what I want to do is bring up the telemetry, 
and go down here and select discover new sensors and now you can see that we have all of the different things that we want as far as RSSI and the different values of the gyro but we also have voltage VFAS so I have actually already went and set up a switch to call out my voltage so all we got to do if you're familiar with the Tranus let's just go and find it there it is you want VFAS nothing with the plus or the minus 15.8 and then set your time so now it's going to basically tell me that every 15 seconds I also want to add it to my top bar in my telemetry screen so if you just go to the bottom of telemetry and hit VFAS now you'll see my voltage is right there so that's just a couple more things I wanted to show you if we put the Zeus down here, rearrange the camera, go ahead and arm it. 15.8 volts. Everything's arming, spinning up, power up. 15.6. And the cool thing to notice is that, you know, they did a really cool thing with like air mode and stuff. So air mode's always on, and you can see I'm here on the bench, and I'm not hopping around or nothing at all. I discovered this during my hover test. I also heard 15. them speak about 7. it. So that is one cool feature right there. So now we can just disarm, arm again, disarm. So everything's working. So I'm going to cut this into the video and uh, we'll talk to you here in a second.